Skoda's fourth generation Fabia makes up in sense and practicality for anything it might lack in dynamic looks and pin sharp handling. All the latest VW Group chassis technology has finally made it to this super mini model line and the result is a very complete product indeed. Skoda's modern day renaissance can broadly be traced to one model, this one, the Fabia Supermini. The design we look at here is the fourth generation version, building on a heritage stretching back to 1999. That all seems like a very long time ago now. Today, the Skoda brand is so in tune with the times that the Volkswagen Group has chosen it to develop its forthcoming range of small electric cars. But for the time being, anyway, in the Checkmakers lineup, there's still a place for a conventional combustion supermini like the Fabia. And small wonder, conventional superminis like this one still make up over half of all new car sales in Europe. The Fabia was the car that brought credibility to Skoda. When the VW Group bought the company in 1991, they updated the Czech brand's ageing favourite hatch and called it the Felicia. But the real effort went into the Mark I 6Y series Fabia, eventually launched in 1999. That model redefined just how large a Super Mini could be with a spacious interior pretty much as big inside as some older family hatchbacks from the next class up. Every small car maker had to match it and Super Minis quickly became so big that the market rather hurriedly created a smaller city car segment below them. The Fabia had proved to be a very significant car. The second generation 5J series design of 2007 added a bit of extra style to the Fabia recipe and even spawned a successful world rally car. And the NJ series third generation model of 2014 re-emphasised the traditional Fabia value proposition. Which brings us up to date. But if you know the Skoda range, you might be wondering why the Fabia model line still exists. The brand does, after all, these days have another super mini shaped model to sell, the Scala. Launched as recently as 2019. But that car is a little larger than the super mini norm and it's slightly too pricey to mark the entry point into the Skoda model lineup. A task assigned to this fourth generation Fabia following the discontinuation of the Czech company's CityGo city car in 2020. Like the Scala, this latest generation Fabia sits on the Volkswagen Group's most up-to-date MQB A0 chassis, a platform that's already been in use in cars like Volkswagen's Polo, Seat's Ibiza and Audi's A1 for half a generation. It was certainly needed for this Fabia, the previous model having been based on elderly PQ26 series underpinnings, dating all the way back to a turn-of-the-century Mark V Golf. This platform should make this fourth generation Fabia bigger as it needs to be, since there's no estate version this time round. But has it made it better? Well, to find out, you're going to need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test. This car knows its market. It may share just about everything with a supposedly sporty Seat Ibiza, but the comfort-orientated drive dynamics here are more Volkswagen Polo or Audi A1. As with all those models, virtually the whole Fabia range is based around one litre petrol power, as was the facelifted version of the previous generation model. Very little's changed beneath the bonnet since then. But, as we'll see, ride quality here aided by the switch to the VW Group's more modern MQB A0 platform, has been finessed to the point where it's difficult to better in this class. And the little TSI turbo power plant you'll probably want in this car, as tested here, is as engaging as ever. As before, the lineup kicks off with the older tech, normally aspirated MPI versions of this three-cylinder power plant that Skoda has been charged with developing for the entire Volkswagen Group. These offering either 65 or 80 PS are making more sense in this budget-orientated Czech contender than they do in a posh Polo. The performance of an MPI-engined Fabia, though, will be distinctly on the leisurely side. Even the 80 PS version needs a yawning 15 and a half seconds to reach 62 miles an hour, a figure the base 65 PS model extends to 15.9 seconds over the same increment. Top speed, either way, is 93 miles an hour. 
More significant than those straightforward stats, though, is the realisation that an MPI-powered, normally aspirated Fabio will have around 60% less pulling power through the gears than an equivalent TSI turbo variant could offer. This means that unless you habitually drive like Miss Marple, in a Fabia MPI, you're going to have to rev the engine a lot more to make meaningful progress. Which, apart from creating the kind of dreadful din that will spoil your enjoyment of the archers, will in turn mean that you'll probably end up using more fuel than you would in the perkier turbo variant. There, we've said our piece. Given this, and the fact that there's no WLTP-rated tax efficiency benefit in sticking with an MPI engine for this car, it's easy to see why the vast majority of Fabia folks stretch to the turbocharged TSI version of this one-litre unit that, as mentioned, we're trying here. You'll be fine with the ordinary 95 PS version, but it's only fractionally more to get yourself this power plant in uprated 110 PS form, which also upgrades you from 5 to 6-speed manual gearbox and gives you the option of specifying the DSG 7-speed auto fitted to this test car. The performance stats between these two units aren't much different. The 95 PS version makes 62 miles an hour in 10.6 seconds on the way to 119 miles an hour. With the 110 PS variants, you're looking at improving that to just over 10 seconds and 127 miles per hour. Whichever TSI power plant you choose, you should be happy with the refinement it delivers, at a cruise anyway, when it's so harsh that you might need to check the rev counter to time your gear changes. It grumbles a little more when charged with shifting 1.1 tonnes of Skoda away from rest and when you're pushing on doesn't feel quite as sprightly as the performance stats suggest. Primarily because, as usual, Skoda has chosen long gear ratios in order to maximise the WLTP stats. That's particularly true when the power plant's mated with the smooth but leisurely shift action of this DSG auto gearbox. Few of these minor issues will matter much to Fabia folk, nor will the news that, once again, the lineup lacks the VRS hot hatch derivative found in first and second generation versions of this car. The concept of a Fabia shopping rocket never did make much sense, even when fitted non negotiably with a diesel engine. The few potential customers who remember those days might be satisfied with the token warmer performance variant inserted at the top of the range, featuring the Volkswagen Group's larger capacity 1.5-litre TSI unit. This 150 PS engine, the only one in the range with four cylinders, has to be had with the DSG Auto gearbox, but can only be had with sporty but pricey Monte Carlo trim and makes 62 miles an hour in eight seconds en route to 139 miles an hour. But you don't choose a Fabia with one eye on how quickly it gets to 60, or if you do, you're looking at the wrong car and ought instead to be directed to a Seat Ibiza or Ford Fiesta in this class. With those rivals, you'll get a fraction less body roll through the turns and a little more traction than this Czech model's eco-centred tyres can deliver. There's an XDS Plus electronic differential system to aid corner turning, but there's no particular incentive to ever drive this car on its door handles. Neither an Ibiza or a Fiesta, though, can get close to the way this Skoda rides the potholes, speed humps and tarmac tears of everyday suburban life. If, as is quite likely, you're graduating into this fourth generation model from the previous NJ Series Mark III design with its ancient old PQ26 era platform, this is the thing about the car you'll probably notice first on the test drive. A Volkswagen Polo could match the ride quality on offer here, but nothing else in the class can. Like its predecessor, this Fabia impresses when it comes to low speed manoeuvrability. Its light steering, tight turning circle and great all-round visibility making town travel easy. As you might expect, at higher speeds the helm isn't exactly full of feedback, but it's reasonably communicative and you always know what the front tyres are doing. Overall, there's still a real maturity 
in the way this car drives, which makes it appropriate that TSI engine versions of this model can now be had with an optional dose of the Volkswagen Group's latest semi-autonomous drive tech. That's still a rare thing to find in a Super Mini, and primarily here this means inclusion of the company's travel assist system, as seen on the brand's larger models. It's a setup capable of taking over the steering, braking and acceleration of this car at speeds starting from 19 miles an hour with a manual gearbox or zero miles an hour if you specify the DSG also. The travel assist set up then working in either case right up to the car's maximum speed. That's providing the driver keeps their hands on the new capacitive steering wheel. To achieve its supporting role, the travel assist system relies on two key features, lane assist for lateral guidance and adaptive cruise control for longitudinal guidance. So if you specify the system, it'll come with these two. The adaptive cruise control system incorporates the brand's predictive ACC tech, which uses the signals from the front-facing camera, as well as relevant GPS and map data to slow or speed the car. If your Fabia has sat-nav and DSG auto transmission fitted, the predictive ACC setup's even cleverer, working together with the gearbox and the navigation system to proactively take into account local speed limit information, town boundary signs, junctions and roundabouts. All of this, though, is almost certainly more tech than most Fabia folk will need. As ever, this car makes more sense the less you can spend on it, though, as mentioned earlier, with the caveat of needing to ideally stretch to that more flexible TSI version of the one-litre engine. This mid-range model, we reckon, offers a bit of a sweet spot with this Skoda's value proposition. And if you're thinking of downsizing, you might well like it a lot. This fourth generation Fabia gets a more athletic, sculptural, sharply drawn design. Replace the badge on the glossy, wide radiator grille and you could easily be persuaded that this was a super mini from one of the posher brands in the VW Group. But can we really still call this a super mini? This Mark IV design exceeds the 4 metre mark for the first time. It's 111 millimetres longer than its predecessor, is the largest conventional contender in the small hatch class, and is pretty much as big as the original Mark I Octavia family hatch that Skoda launched into the aforementioned segment back in 1996. Perhaps that supersized approach is just as well, given that Skoda has now discontinued the alternative estate body style that characterised the two previous generation Fabia designs. So it's just this five-door hatch, which from what we've already said, you might not be surprised to hear, is usefully larger than its VW Group small hatch counterparts. The largest of these, the Volkswagen Polo, is 36mm shorter, think 49mm more if you're comparing against a Seat Ibiza. Lots of effort here has been put into aerodynamics though, reduced from 0.32 to 0.28 CD this time around. Achieved thanks to touches like these smaller door mirrors, sleeker wheel designs and an increase from 3 to 12 different underfloor panels for better coverage of areas crucial to drag like the engine and the axles. For most, though, it'll be the cosmetic stuff that's more important. Previous Fabia designs set a bit of a super mini trend with contrast coloured roof shades. And as you can see, that can continue here in black or grey if you choose the right trim level. Plus, you can bling the wheels up a bit, as with the 17-inch dark Procyon black metallic rims. Standard sizes range between 15 and 18 inches, and unusually on a modern car, disc brakes on the rear wheels are only optional. Let's switch our focus to the front. A revolution in design language is what chief designer Oliver Stefani and his team were aiming for. We're not sure that we've got that, but this fourth generation Fabia certainly has a bit more overtaking presence. That striking hexagonal grille flanked by razor sharp narrow LED headlights. More significant still is the inclusion of aero design once the preserve of luxury cars and there are actively adjustable slats in the front bumper's lower air inlet and the bumper corners incorporate air curtain vents to more smoothly channel air across the wheel arches. 
At the rear, there are smarter crystalline LED taillights and horizontal servicing that emphasises this fourth generation model's 48mm increase in width. But as we've been saying, more significant are the things you can't see, like the fact that this much larger structure somehow weighs pretty much the same as that of the previous model. That's primarily down to a huge rise in more sophisticated materials in the architecture. The use of advanced press-hardened and ultra-high-strength steels has risen from 15% to over 40%. In short, though you might find the looks a little forgettable, the reality is that small cars don't get a lot more advanced than this. Will that approach continue on into the cabin? Let's see. Well, it feels quite sophisticated if you get a version like this one with Skoda's 10.25-inch virtual cockpit instrument screen, though you could argue that sticking with conventional analogue dials is more suited to this Fabia's sensible vibe. You don't get much in terms of soft-touch surfaces, but the designers have avoided cheaper-feeling third-world fittings, while the dash top's geometric Saffiano-style finish, the brushed silver central trimming bar, and this unusual two-spoke steering wheel all add a little extra cabin interest. Best of all, Skoda has avoided the Volkswagen Group interior design trend towards fiddly touch sliders and obscurely lit haptic touch buttons. Everything is instead dealt with by chunky physical controls and dials, so you feel instantly at home in a way you never would in, say, a current Volkswagen Golf. In short, if you're fed up with frivolous small car design, you'll fit right in with a Fabia. Not that this is a character-free zone. The centre dash shaping below the large freestanding central display reflects the contours of the Skoda grille. Large circular air vents with glossy smart serrated edges decorate the corners of the dash. You get this rather fetching dimpled finish in certain areas of the door cards, which have almost freestanding handle attachments and Fabia lettering features on the sides of the virtual cockpit housing. Further up the range, these limited flourishes are embellished by stitched dash trimming and ambient lighting, along with big car touches, new to Fabia folk, like a heated windscreen and heat for the steering wheel. Fortunately, you don't have to push up to a posh trim level to get soft, supple leather for the steering wheel, gear shifter and the conventional handbrake lever or to get proper front seat comfort. These front chairs are supportively shaped and, impressively for a Super Mini, include lumbar support with virtually all models. As for cutting edge infotainment technology, well, as ever, it depends on how much you're prepared to pay. The base spec six and a half inch swing spec central screen you get with the more affordable models is pretty old hat. Not that much better is this test car's mid-range eight inch Bolero unit. The top 9.2 inch Amundsen setup you have to pay extra for on most models is far more like it and features navigation, Wi-Fi, a built-in eSIM, the brand's Care Connect smartphone connectivity and the company's LoRa voice control feature, though you still have to pay more to get that bigger monitor with the Skoda SmartLink Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring system that's been added in here. This humbler 8-inch display's glass-fronted finish is smart, though. The menus work well and the graphics are sharp. Plus, there's a useful ledge to rest your finger while you're using it. If you've gone for a Fabia variant with this 10.25-inch virtual cockpit instrument package or paid extra for it, then you'll need to use the centre screen to tailor what you view through the steering wheel once you've chosen from the various instrument layouts available via this wheel-spoke button. Well, the ones that include extra customizable data panels anyway. Two of the three widescreen are more minimalist and don't. More usually, you'll probably want either the single or twin dial layouts. Lots of info features can be added into the instrument display, depending on your choice from various elements selectable in the virtual cockpit part of the central infotainment screen's car section. Things like consumption, acceleration, audio, distance travelled, journey time and range. Skoda makes a lot of its so-called simply clever cabin convenience features. Apparently, if everything was specified, there'd be 42 such practical touches in this car. Unfortunately, though, most of these reside on the options list. Things like a wireless charging mat and a USB-C socket on the rearview mirror, that'd be ideal for a dash cam. 
This is an undeniably practical interior, though, with 16 different oddment spaces, accounting for a total storage volume of 106 litres. There's a huge glove box, decently sized door bins, and extra touches that other brands often forget, like an overhead sunglasses compartment, a lidded cubby by the driver's right knee, and a wide clip in the windscreen for your parking ticket. We wish Volkswagen Group cars would offer USB-A as well as USB-C ports. There are C-spec ports in this spacious area at the bottom of the centre stack, which is why there's a need for this rather unsightly converter lead. A couple of cup holders, a small cubby and a 12-volt port sit between the seats with a larger open bin further back. And there's another ticket clip in the driver's sun visor. It's easy to find an ideal driving position. The gear levers within easy reach. The pedals line up nicely with the reach and rake adjustable steering wheel. And on all models, you get a height adjustable seat. Build quality from the Mlada Boleslav factory seems strong. And the boxy body shell is much easier to see out of than curvier, low-slung cars in this category, like the Vauxhall Corsa and the Peugeot 208. The relatively slim A and B pillars help here, aiding your view at junctions and roundabouts. Also useful is the fact that the rear glass area is larger than on most rivals. It's a lot bigger than that on a Ford Fiesta, for instance which makes parking easier, as does the fact that above entry-level trim, rear sensors are standard. You can now add in a rear-view camera and an auto parking system if you want it to. Right, let's take a stroll rearwards, pausing on the way to notice that almost uniquely Skoda touch, a pull-out umbrella in its own compartments secreted into the door. A standard feature from the mid-range models upwards. As for the back seat, well, the 94mm wheelbase increase that the adoption of that new MQB A0 platform has made possible in this car should deliver almost family hatch standards of space. Is that what you get here? Well, the doors open wide, and thanks to this car's relatively tall roofline, it's not necessary to stoop a little on your way in, as is necessary in some rivals. And that'll also make it easier for parents to reach in and strap down child seats or deal with unruly youngsters. And once inside here at the rear, well, you couldn't call it spacious. No super mini segment car can ever be that, but... By the standards of the class, there's an impressive amount of room here. More than you get in a car from the sector above, like Renault's Megane, in fact. And as much as you get in something much pricier, like, say, a Mercedes A-Class. Were it not for this rather over-high central transmission tunnel, you'd be able to fit three adults back here on shorter trips. Even as it is, three kids should be fine. The extra width of this fourth generation design really helps in this regard. That fresh platform really pays off in terms of footwell space. It's now just about possible for one six foot adult to sit behind another. Though in such a situation, the rear person's knees would be rather buried in the front seat backs. Plus, headroom is unbettered in the class. A new Simply Clever feature lies with these extra inset stowage areas for the seat back pockets. Ideal for a smartphone and for only a tiny amount more, you can, with most models, add a couple of USB-C ports here in the rear to charge it. Touches forgotten by some rivals include twin central vents, individual overhead reading lights and coat hooks on the B-pillars. Nor are the rear headrests of the sort that dig uncomfortably into the back of your neck until you raise them, as is the case with a Corsa or a 208. There are decently sized door bins, there's easy access to this central bin between the seats, and more coat hooks feature in the overhead grab handles. Let's finish by heading back to the tailgate, pausing on the way to notice another of Skoda's trumpeted so-called simply clever touches. This ice scraper built into the fuel filler cap. It also incorporates a tyre tread depth indicator. Time to check out the cargo area. Now, once you've negotiated a fairly high loading lip, you'll find 380 litres of luggage space back here. That's 50 litres more than the previous generation model and is much the same as you get from a car in the next segment up, like a Golf or a Focus. It's also usefully more than you get from the other 
VW Group Super Minis using this platform. A Polo offers 351 litres. With the Seat Ibiza, it's 355 litres. For reference, the market-leading Ford Fiesta gives you a paltry 311 litres. We haven't got the optional Simply Clever package fitted here, but if we own this car, we might well have chosen to have fitted it because for £190 more, it gives you some really useful extra cargo area features. Net attachments, a double-sided boot floor, one side with a wipe clean surface, and a kind of hammock-like stowage pocket that fits below the parcel shelf. Annoyingly though, you can't have this optional pack with something we do have here, an adjustable height boot floor. Beneath that, there's room for the proper spare wheel, which unlike most of its rivals, Skoda hasn't decided you don't need. Big tick for that. There are proper sturdy bag hooks on both sides. You get a useful recessed area to the left, the usual four tie down points and an elasticated strap, along with a light to the right. Pushing forward the 60-40 split folding rear backrest could be easier. The retraction buttons are located next to the headrests and getting to them might be tricky if your arms are loaded down with shopping bags. Fortunately though, the backrests are light and sufficiently sprung, so pushing them forward isn't too difficult. With everything retracted, 1,190 litres of space will be freed up, though the floor area unfortunately isn't quite flat. And that'll have to be enough because, as mentioned earlier, there's no longer an alternative estate body style on offer. From launch, pricing for this fourth generation Fabia kicked off from just under £15,500. But that's for a base trimmed S spec version with a feeble 65 PS 1 litre MPI petrol engine hardly anyone will want. The real starting point for the Fabia lineup comes with Volume SE Comfort Trim, which from launch was priced from well over £17,000 in 1 litre MPI 80 PS form, or closer to £18,000 for the version with the 95 PS 1 litre TSI Turbo petrol unit that most Fabia folk will want. From there, the lineup flows through mid level colour edition spec, which is what we have here, and then on up to the plusher SEL and Monte Carlo variants, topping out at around £24,000. All of which means that though this car remains decent value, it's no longer a bargain basement choice. Still, this pricing structure should be enough, for the moment anyway, to maintain its position as Skoda's second best selling model after the Octavia and keep the interest of the private buyers who make up over 65% of sales. This time round, there's no estate body style option, it's just this five door hatch. Most of the trim levels offer customers looking at the TSI turbo version of the one litre three cylinder engine the opportunity for £350 extra to upgrade to the perkier 110 PS version of this unit, which also upgrades you from a five to a six speed manual transmission. Opt for that 110 PS unit and you'll have the chance to find another £1,000 to get yourself the DSG auto gearbox that we're trying here. Top Monte Carlo trim is the only way to get yourself a Fabio with four cylinders beneath the bonnet. With that spec, a one and a half litre TSI petrol unit with 150 PS marks the summit of the range, only offered with DSG auto transmission. Before getting into the super mini alternatives to this car from other brands, we ought to point out that this isn't the only super mini segment contender that Skoda sells. On the other side of your local dealer's showroom will sit the only slightly larger Scala model, which sits on an older platform but uses exactly the same 1 litre TSI and 1.5. TSI petrol engines. Think around £1,400 to upgrade from a Fabia to a directly comparable Scala, a spend which gets you 254mm of extra body length, so slightly more rear seat space and 87 litres more boot capacity. It's your call. Let's say you want this Fabia. What kind of value proposition can a mainstream model like this one offer? Well, in evaluating that, the obvious place to start is with the three other Volkswagen Group Super Minis that share all the same engineering as this one. Volkswagen's Polo, Seat Ibiza and Audi's A1 Sportback. Well, the Seat costs about the same as a comparable Fabia, while equivalent versions of the Polo and the A1 cost around £1,000 more. 
What about the super mini segment market sales leaders, Ford's Fiesta and Vauxhall's Corsa? Well, an equivalent Fiesta 1-litre EcoBoost costs around the same as a comparable Fabia. A Corsa 1.2 Turbo will set you back around £500 more. Looking at some other segment options, the Mazda 2 and the Mini 5-door are comparably priced against this Skoda. An equivalent Renault Clio would cost you about £1,000 more. Bigger savings than that are available elsewhere. For example, should you be looking at a base Fabia SE Comfort 1-litre MPI 80 PS model, the Citroen C3 and the Suzuki Swift can both be had with similar engines at savings of around £3,000. With an MG3, the saving would be over £4,000. But with big savings come big compromises in terms of technology and equipment, which you'll really feel with the three models just mentioned. It's also worth pointing out that some popular segment choices will actually cost you quite a lot more than a Fabia. The avant-garde Peugeot 208, for instance, is around £2,000 more. And of course, you'll pay more for the two full hybrid only models in the segment. Honda's Jazz and Toyota's Yaris, both of which cost from around £20,000. If having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a Fabia, that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Skoda has been with the standard spec. Well, you might be pleasantly surprised here. This fourth generation model offers some significant customer gains in this department, specifically in the area of big car technology, though you wouldn't necessarily know that if you were shopping further down the range. As we implied at the beginning, base S spec is only there to make the range seem cheaper than it actually is. And as such, not too much gets included as standard, though you do get LED headlights, air conditioning and a swing spec DAB radio with Bluetooth and a 6.5 inch central colour display. As mentioned earlier, to get a decent choice of engines, your range starting point will need to be SE Comfort trim. And you'll feel a bit better about having a Fabia equipped to that standard in your driveway, thanks to the 15-inch Rotare alloy wheels, front fog lights, rear parking sensors, front seat lumbar support and leather trim for the steering wheel, handbrake and the gear shift knob. Move up to the mid-range colour edition trim we have here and you get a more fashionable look courtesy of a contrast coloured roof in either grey or as here in black plus bigger 16-inch Proxima design alloy wheels with dark finishing. Inside there's an 8-inch Bolero central infotainment screen. Conventional instruments make way for a 10.25-inch virtual cockpit dashboard display and this smarter, grey-stitched fabric upholstery and an engine start button. As an all-round trim level value proposition, we reckon this one probably hits the range sweet spot. If you've more to spend, your dealer will point you first to plush SEL spec, identifiable from the outside by a chromed window surround and 16-inch Proxima design alloy wheels with silver finishing. Inside with an SEL model, the cabin's lifted quite a lot by ambient lighting and plusher trimming. Chrome around the vents and metallic grey inlays and stitched micro suede on the dash. Also helping here is a larger 9.2 inch Amundsen central infotainment screen, which comes with navigation, web radio, voice control and for the first year of ownership, Skoda's Care Connect and infotainment package. Other SEL features include cruise control with a speed limiter, dual zone air conditioning with Climatronic electronic control, powered rear windows, textile floor mats, and that traditional Skoda touch, an umbrella in the driver's door. That only leaves top Monte Carlo trim, instantly identifiable as the sporty option in the range. That gets you 17-inch Pro Scion black painted diamond cut alloy wheels, sports bumpers and black finishing for the front grille, the door mirrors and the model lettering. Inside, the sporty theme continues with red metallic upper decorative trim on the dash and carbon effect decorative lower fascia trim. You also get front sport seats, aluminium pedals and upholstery in a mixture of fabric and artificial leather.
What about options for mainstream models? Well, be careful here. It's not impossible to spec an ordinary 95 PS 1 litre TSI engine Fabia up to the point where you'll be paying £25,000 or more. So let's start with the various packages that your dealer will want to offer you. You probably want the comfort package that we've got here, which adds two essentials, a variable height boot floor and a steel emergency spare wheel, plus a nice to have feature, USB-C ports by the rear view mirror. The Comfort Plus package embellishes this with lumbar support and height adjustments to both front seats, along with a front centre armrest. You might also want to look at the Winter package, which gives you a heated steering wheel, heated front seats, a heated windscreen, and, if your Fabia doesn't have it, dual-zone air conditioning. Next, there's the convenience package, also something we have here, which has keyless entry, a wireless charging mat and hill hold assist. What else? Well, not everyone's confident about parking. So if you're not, you'll want to tick the box for the park and go package, which gives you front and rear parking sensors if your Fabia doesn't have them. And you can upgrade this to a park and go plus package, which includes a system where your Fabia will automatically steer itself into tight spaces. For extra visibility at night, there's the light and view package, which in basic form gives you front fog lights with a cornering function along with rain sensors and headlight washers. If you get the light and view package in its plus form, then added to those features are LED headlights in their full beam form. You can add extra class to the cabin with the ambient lighting package, which includes lighting strips around the interior, along with LED lights for the front centre console and interior door handles, as well as LED reading lights in the front and rear. Finally, for the boot, there's a Simply Clever package which adds cargo elements and a net arrangement to stop smaller items from moving around as you drive, plus a storage pocket under the boot cover, top tether hooks for child seats, and a double-sided boot floor with a wipe-clean side you can turn over to muddy boots and muddy dogs. You can also have a version of the Simply Clever package that gives you a variable height boot floor if your Fabia doesn't have one, plus a storage bin. Now, what about single options? Now, with colour addition and Monte Carlo trim, you could spend just over £1,000 more on Skoda's top Amundsen infotainment system, which gives you a larger 9.2-inch screen, built-in navigation and Skoda's Care Connect system that will allow you to monitor certain aspects of your Skoda from your smartphone. Amazingly, though, that huge extra spend doesn't get you Apple CarPlay or Android Auto smartphone mirroring. No Fabia offers that as standard. With all the infotainment setups, you have to pay the brand £55 extra for its SmartLink system to add it in, though at least that's a wireless setup, so you won't have to mess around with unsightly leads. See if you can get your dealer to throw that in, along with rear disc brakes, which curiously command an extra £95 on the options list. With SEL trim, you can add the Travel Assist Low package, which gets you adaptive lane assist, adaptive cruise control and a 10.25-inch virtual cockpit instrument cluster display. That display can be ordered as a separate item with SEL trim. And beyond entry-level spec, you can add adaptive cruise control as a separate option into any TSI engine Fabia 2. With colour addition and Monte Carlo trim, you can add the larger 9.2-inch Amundsen central infotainment screen, which, as mentioned earlier, comes with web radio, the brand's LoRa voice control system, and, for the first year of ownership, Skoda's Care Connect and infotainment package, which allows you to control various aspects of your car from a downloadable app. With top Monte Carlo trim, you can also add Skoda's drive mode selection system, which alters throttle feel and steering weight. OK, we're getting through this. Now, certain variants allow you to add a panoramic glass roof and rear privacy glass. Earlier, we were briefing you on some practical options, so you might want to know that you can add in things like a tow bar, mud flaps, a roof rack and a roof box. Various smart holders are available for the cabin for things like clothes hangers and tablets. And you can add a litter bin and maybe also a plastic protective boot dish. The boot area netting system we mentioned earlier is available as a separate option, as is the double-sided boot mat. Here, textile floor mats have been added too. 
Bear in mind that you're almost certainly going to need to pay your Skoda dealer extra for your choice of paint colour. The only standard shade with S, SE Connect and SEL trim is solid energy blue. With this colour edition model, you don't have to pay extra for candy white pearl effect paint, though here we've got a race blue metallic shade and there are freshly introduced phoenix orange and graphite grey finishes. Depending on the trim level you choose, there are various different 16, 17 or 18 inch alloy wheel design choices. This car has been upgraded to 17 inch Pro Scion black metallic rims. And you can add decorative door seal covers too. On to safety, an area where Skoda continues to keep this model well up to a high class standard. Standard on all Fabias is a front assist system that scans the road ahead as you drive for potential accident hazards, warning you if one is detected and automatically braking if necessary. This setup also includes pedestrian protection that specifically searches for pedestrians who might be about to step out in front of you and, if necessary, can initiate braking to avoid them. All Fabias also now get lane assist, which alerts you if you drift out of lane, and as with front assist, can be easily disabled using buttons on the steering wheel. You also get the usual modern e-call setup, which in the event of an accident where the airbags are activated, will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. The usual passive safety features are fitted as well, of course. There are twin front, side and curtain airbags, ISOFIX child seat fastenings and anti-whiplash front head restraints. On top of this, there are the usual electronic systems to try and ensure that neither of these features will ever be needed. That means ESC stability control and an ASR traction control system. There's ABS braking, as you'd expect, and panic stops will be advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning lights. If you want more, there's an optional safety package that includes knee airbags for the driver and rear side airbags. The latter, a really rare feature in this segment. And as mentioned earlier, the optional convenience package includes a hill hold assist feature that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. For the time being, Skoda has no really small EV that potential Fabia folk might compare to this car when it comes to calculations of overall running costs. That situation will shortly change. We'd expected that in the interim, Skoda might introduce its current ETSI, mild hybrid technology, into this design. But there's no sign of that, presumably because the vehicle architecture here wasn't originally developed to support it. And maybe also because ETSI tech would push the price of a Fabia beyond what most likely customers would be prepared to pay. A price premium of that sort is one of the things that's put paid to diesel engine Fabia motoring for the UK market. Fortunately, the one litre three cylinder petrol engine the range is now built around is a pretty frugal unit, easily meeting the current Euro 60 emissions standard in all its forms. At the affordable end of the range, you can have it in old school, normally aspirated MPI guys, a unit here slightly more powerful than it was in the previous generation model, yet cleaner and more frugal. You're looking at up to 55.4 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle with both 65 and 80 PS versions of this power plant. The 65 PS unit has a best CO2 reading of 114 grams per kilometer. For the 80 PS unit, it's 116 grams per kilometer. As we've said elsewhere in this film though, it's much better to stretch to the turbocharged TSI 1 litre unit. Not least because despite its extra performance, it's no less frugal or clean. Just as with the 1 litre MPI 80 PS normally aspirated engine, the figures deliver bests of 55.4 mpg and 116 grams per kilometre, regardless of whether you order your manual gearbox Fabia TSI with 95 or 110 PS. You won't do quite as well if you've a Fabio 1 litre TSI 110 PS model with a DSG auto transmission. We're trying here, of course, but the figures are still very respectable. Bests of 50.4 mpg and 127 grams per kilometre of CO2. 
For completion, we'll also give you the stats for the 1.5 litre TSI DSG Fabio Monte Carlo sporty model, 47.9 mpg and 134 grams per kilometre. Monte Carlo trimmed 1 litre TSI variants have bigger 17 inch wheels, so they're a little less frugal than Fabia's with the same engine but a lesser spec. Whatever Fabia 1 litre variant you choose, achieving 40 to 45 mpg on a regular basis should be no problem. That's what we've been averaging over the course of this test. The other cost-related facts surrounding this Skoda are pretty straightforward. You can expect decent residuals sink around 45% after three years and 36,000 miles. Industry experts cap reckon a Fabio will hold its value slightly better than a comparable Seat Ibiza or Renault Clio for the first three years of ownership. One argument you could advance for choosing the base MPI normally aspirated engine would relate to the fact that it attracts much lower insurance premiums. The base 65 PS 1 litre MPI petrol S model is rated at a very affordable Group 2E. It's Group 3E for the 80 PS version of this MPI unit. Go for the 1 litre TSI turbo engine and those ratings rise quite a lot, ranging between 10 and 11E depending on trim choice. It's between 12 and 13E for the 110 PS version of this power plant. For the top 1.5 litre TSI Monte Carlo model, you're looking at Group 19E. As for servicing, well, as usual with Skoda models, there's the choice of either fixed or flexible maintenance packages. You'll choose the fixed approach if you cover less than 10,000 miles a year, and with this, the car will typically be looked at every 12 months. If your daily commute is more than 25 miles, and your Fabia will regularly be driven on longer distance journeys, you'll be able to work with a flexible regime that in the first two years of ownership could see you travelling up to 20,000 miles or waiting up to 24 months before a garage visit. A single inspection service every year or 20,000 miles will be required thereafter, whichever comes sooner. And warranties? Well, the standard package is three years and 60,000 miles. We can't see why Skoda couldn't extend that mileage limit to 100,000 miles, since that's what you get with a mechanically very similar Volkswagen Caddy model. Doing that, though, wouldn't give Skoda dealers so much of an opportunity to sell extended warranty packages. There's one for four years and 75,000 miles. Or if you plan to see a bit more of the world in your Fabia, there's a five-year, 90,000-mile package. Whatever your decision, your car will come with three years of pan-European roadside assistance that has no mileage restriction. The paintwork warranty lasts for three years, and as you'd expect, this Super Mini is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion package. If you're the kind of person who really likes Skodas, then you'll really like this one. All the things that attract you to the brand are present and correct. Class-leading cabin space, an exceptionally good standard of ride, low-key looks and proven mechanicals. If, though, you'd habitually choose a Super Mini from another maker, you might at first find this car a touch underwhelming. But persevere. The depth of design you get here will reward you for doing that. People have really thought hard about making this a small hatch that's exceptionally day-to-day -day usable, as you can see with all the various simply clever features that you'll quickly take for granted. They populate a cabin that isn't particularly avant-garde, but which we found functions so much better than supposedly more modern examples of current interior design. There's progress here, but it's practically orientated, just as it should be, in an affordable family hatch. Oh yes, affordability. Well, we're disappointed that this isn't quite as much of a selling point as it used to be with small Skodas. These days, if you load a Fabia up with all the kit you could get on a comparable Volkswagen Polo or Audi A1, the final price wouldn't be that much different. And you'll certainly be paying more than you might expect you'd have to for your Fabia if you add in plusher equipment or the kind of style statements we have here. But then you're getting a slightly bigger car with this Czech Super Mini Contender. In fact, one that's nearly as big as a Focus-sized family hatch from the class above. 
anyone torn between these two small hatch segments will be well served here. It's unlikely to bother many Fabia buyers that the engine range is now almost completely based around one litre, three-cylinder petrol power. That's the option almost all of them would have selected anyway. And we reckon the turbo TSI version of this unit is arguably the best and most responsive engine of this configuration you can buy. It's surely one of the cleanest and most economical power plants of its kind. All of which leaves us, well, where? It's true there are certainly more stylish and sharper handling cars you could choose in this class, but many of them will cost you quite a lot more. If instead you focus on the things you're actually going to most need in a super mini of this kind, ease of use, low running costs, practicality, it becomes clear that a Fabia now ticks a lot of those boxes more emphatically than ever before. It's still a car in this class that you can't ignore. It may not be the small runabout you've ideally dreamed of owning, but as ever, it could very well be the one you actually need.